Hello again. It's your favorite sub 50 subscriber YouTuber. Uh, here I am again in the same car with the same hat. Promise it's a different day. Uh, is this hat for videos where I talk semi-seriously about things? Is it a hat to help cover up my receding hairline? Maybe a bit of column A, maybe a bit of column B. Uh, recently, I made a video called The Other Half of Self-Help and in that video, I made the case that the much-discussed approach to improving one's life, you know, high focus, sharpened mindset, peak discipline, is really only one side of the coin to being a complete approach. Who's going to carry the ball? And that it seems to me that we also, in addition to that, need to learn from mindfulness, which has its roots in Eastern philosophies and religions such as Buddhism, Hinduism, Taoism, which teach us that it is equally essential to let all of that thought and analysis go and just be present with what we are doing right now in this moment. And that allows us to loosen our anxieties, stress and worries about where we are at on our own journeys. So, so yeah, that, that was that. But in this video, I kind of want to draw out that idea a little bit more based on something I've been reading recently, and more bluntly, just an idea that popped into my head as I was walking the other day. Mm, that's a good video idea. Mm, mm, mm. So two things. There's going to be two things in this video. I don't know what that is. That's, that's kind of weird. First of all, I'm going to talk about uh, an essential element of Zen Buddhism that I've been learning about recently, the concept of duality. And second, I'm going to talk about how duality is beginning to be very beneficial to me on my own self-help journey. I promise to not do this thing again. I don't... Yeah, okay. For quick context, I've recently just finished reading The Way of the Zen by the late Alan Watts, published in 1957. If you were someone who has trawled through the murky depths of YouTube at 2am for years, running in circles looking for <laughs> motivation or answers for how to improve your life, then there's a pretty good chance that you've come across this guy. Or even if you weren't necessarily searching for it, but you were just kind of doom scroll searching for something else and then somehow this video got suggested to you. Top 10 sick football goals, but not Ronaldo, because he is shit. Oh, who the fuck's this guy? I would describe Alan Watts as one of the big daddies of the self-help world. That felt weird to say. Uh, he is credited during the 1950s and 60s as being an instrumental figure in bringing and translating in many ways a lot of Eastern philosophies and religions to a Western audience by helping to deliver them in a more palatable and kind of decodified way. Is that a word? I don't know. Let's just roll with it. This was done via best-selling books, seminars, etc. in a way that could be more easily grasped and almost as a antithesis to the traditional Western psychological thought where the ego or the self is always king in our minds. You can't not look at this man and think he has some enlightened shit to say. Come on. He even looks like a real-life Dumbledore or Gandalf. Like, I feel safe when I hear him speak. I actually, I used to go to sleep back in, like, 2017 often, listening to his long lectures on mindfulness. So much so that once one of my housemates thought that I was really into bringing elderly men home so they could lullaby talk me to sleep. The Way of the Zen is one of the West's first best-selling books on Zen Buddhism. You know, like, how it came to be its evolution and interaction with other religions and philosophies, and of course, its central tenets and teachings. I highly recommend it, and I will also link it below, so that's helpful. But within this analysis, one of the central teachings to Zen Buddhism is that of the concept of duality, which is what I'm going to talk about now. I'm going to take a crack at this definition. If you think you have a better one below, please let me know, as that would be really helpful, because maybe maybe I have absolutely no freaking idea what I'm talking about. It's, it's highly likely. Duality, to me, is the recognition and acceptance that everything in our experience always exists as something in relation to, connection to, and attachment to its environment, such that anything is always at least the opposite of something else, if not connected to several, several things more broadly. When you see a light on in a dark room, you know that is light, but the reason that you know that is light and you can identify that is light is because you know it is not dark. You distinguish it from dark, such that you can only know light if you know dark. In the same way, you can only know up if you know down, you can only know happiness if you know sadness, you can only know hungry if you know full, you can only know hairline if you know receding hairline. 
Ah. The implications of this is to say that everything in our experience is actually connected, and it's only our modern, civilized ways of thinking that seek to measure and delineate and rationalize everything that we see. Here are some fun examples. A year begins only when our calendar says so, someone becomes rich only once they collect a certain amount of dollars, and at the risk of a pretty controversial topic here, a human life is argued by different people to begin at any number of stages. Is it at conception? Is it at birth? Is it when they listen to Tiesto for the first time? So I'm going to go deeper and I have this whole thing spill by myself. Can you not read it? No. Each viewpoint, regardless of what your viewpoint is, would argue that the opposing view is an imprecise and arbitrary way to measure that thing. I mean, clearly the answer is Tiesto in that example, but you know, just for like argument's sake. I've heard a lot of things and they plot flights better. Just like how when you want to plot a curved line on a graph, it's actually just a series of individual points or straight lines. It's effectively calculated inferences rather than being the actual experience of the curve itself. Look at me, I'm a curve! Drawing this concept out to its end then, Zen Buddhism, via the process of getting you to see duality, would get you to see that if everything is dual, is connected, cannot be separated from the world around it, then you too, in your own ego, cannot be separated from the world you experience, cannot be separated from others. And in the acceptance that you are part of the all, and that you as an ego does not actually really exist, would get you to sigh and laugh at the absurdity of everything. That would be pretty sweet, except you would then also probably think that you'd like to pay for food next month, and so you'd probably go back to your ego and, um, yeah, like, get a job. And so then, what does this principle of duality do for the world of self-help? How can understanding duality help us to push ourselves to become better versions of ourselves. I think there is initially some disconnect here. A lot of the surface level understanding of Zen Buddhism seems to me at least that, you know, well, everything only exists in this moment, uh, life is suffering, our reality is subjective, it's all connected, it's all just kind of a laugh, so it's easy to infer from that an attitude of, you know, what's the point, why do anything, why don't I just go sit on the beach and stare out to see in a contemplative old man stare again? <sighs> Yeah, that's right, we got callback jokes on this channel. What? <laughs> like and subscribe. But I do think that that's a bit of a lazy view, because over the last couple of months, I'm finding that duality has been personally very beneficial for me. As some bloke who has been battling anxiety and overthinking and obsessing over determining light from dark for years. What does it all mean? In two ways. I've got two points. I said I wouldn't do this again. I lied. <laughs> First, I find duality is helping me overcome a lack of discipline to do necessary but difficult work that will make my life better. Everything from eating well, to exercising, to putting in quality work hours, to trying to make slightly less rubbish videos. And that's because for me, duality helps me feel at ease and connected to the negative emotions associated with discipline. Instead of, for example, knowing that I have to go to the gym, then thinking, hey, I'm a piece of shit, that's difficult, that takes time, and then just not doing it. Instead, I'm getting just a little bit better in taking a breath and thinking to myself what the duality, what the inverse of that negative emotion is. That is the feeling of completing going to the gym, the rush right after of accomplishment, the energy of having my chest puffed out, swinging my arms around, walking out of the gym, feeling like I'm physically imposing, despite the fact that I'm easily the scrawniest person in most gyms. And you know, that's, that's just how it's gonna be, but that's okay. My point is, is that if we can recall the duality to the instinctive negative emotions we feel when we know we have to do something difficult but good for us, we can also say what I think the Zen Buddhists would say, I would not know the feelings of accomplishment and happiness if I did not know the feelings of difficulty and laziness. And in the knowledge and acceptance, I can see it all part of the same feeling, which helps calm me down and helps me see everything together. So instead of running away from the resistance, I can embrace it and just get the job done. And I find that this really helps to cultivate a simple sense of this is who I am and this is just what I do. I'm not going to try and overcomplicate it any more than it needs to be. And the second way that I am finding duality is helping me on my self-help journey is by reducing my social anxiety. 
This is something that has been on my back for years. Maybe you can relate to this one on some level as well. You know, it's held me back from often meeting new people and even managing existing friendships, not to mention getting unnecessarily stressed ahead of really mundane day-to-day -day interactions. You know the whole horror conversation scenario of like walking up to a cashier. Hi there, sir. What can I get you? Oh, good, thanks, you. Yeah, that's, um... That's, that's my kind of shit. Given that duality helps me to see more of the connectedness of elements in our experience, for me, it makes me see myself less as an isolated little lonely island in a big, bad, scary, endless ocean that is the world. Instead, it helps me realize that people I know and even don't know are all part of the same thing. We're all expressions of the world we live in and we're all sharing the world at the same time. I found myself recently considering more the question, who is to say and what is my arbitrary definition of familiar people and surroundings versus unfamiliar people and surroundings? You know, as an actual thing I should use to regulate my emotions of feeling comfortable or uncomfortable, stressed or not stressed, committing to go to a certain social occasion or scheming some way out of it with some piss weak excuse. And I don't mean this to be wishy-washy bullshit. I've certainly heard many times in my life corny sayings like, strangers are just friends you haven't met yet. But I think this is something different. It actually is something that holds real value. How would you define a social environment you're comfortable versus not comfortable in? Do you need to know someone exactly one year or met them once? Why not twice? Why not met them 2.5 times? The reason for that is because it's much more likely a feeling of comfort than any kind of objective measurable rule. And so why not draw out that idea to conclude that if it's only a feeling guiding your judgment, then open yourself to cultivating a feeling that you are more connected to people you don't know than you would otherwise initially think. In short, your completely free ability to expand your measurements, delineations, and bubbles of comfort for the way that you see the world is the exact same ability that allows you the choice to expand those measurements. It's entirely up to you. Now, that's not to say that you can go up to a complete stranger in the street and call him Papa. Can I give you a hug? Actually, no, please, please do that. That would be hilarious. Please let me know if you do that. But I'm sure you'd be generally positively surprised at how less scarier the world is when you allow yourself to realize and accept that you are as much a rightful part of this world than every single other person that you will come across. Known or unknown, papa or no papa. Plus, to go back to the first point, remember all the times you were socially anxious before doing something but then just did it anyway and had a great time in the end. Just like with the gym example before, you would not know the amazing elated feeling that you have after a night out with someone cool you just met if you did not know the anxiety and the discomfort before going. As Alan Watts ends his book saying, and I quote, When it comes to it, this moment can be called present, only in relation to past and future, or to someone to whom it is present. But when there is neither past nor future, and no one to whom this moment is present, what is it? No, no, actually, what, what is it? I was... Can, can you tell me? I, I don't know. So yeah, allow yourself to see duality, loosen that tight mental grip a little bit. It's starting to be hugely helpful to me on my own self-help journey, and hopefully it can be the same for you. Lastly, if you did not know unsubscribed to this channel, you would not know subscribed to this channel. Bang! Self-promotion. Uh, if you have not subscribed yet, it would do me a huge favor if you could quickly Click that button, tap it, clack tip, clack tip, that's a new one. Uh, that button on your various devices uh, and like the video as well. I hope wherever you are right now in the world, you're keeping well and taking care of yourself. And I will chat to you very soon. Maybe in this hat again, who knows, Pff, mysteries. See ya.